Come here now, girl. Hi, Bon Bon here. After watching my previous Road Tools tutorial explaining the asset inventory and what the myriad of buttons do, you're probably ready to start laying down some roads. I'm not saying that you can't get by without a road laying tutorial. I mean, if you're smart enough to find this tutorial, you are smart enough to start drawing out roads. But there are some subtle differences between the original game and City Skylines 2. Not to mention anyone who has never actually played the City Builder before and is here looking to see if they like the basic mechanics. So today, we will start with some very quick and somewhat stating the obvious lessons, before moving on to the new mechanics and techniques which make this sequel stand out from City Skylines 1. The same disclaimers apply to this video as I included at the start of the basics video, so if I get any questions or comments here, which I've already covered in the intro there, don't be surprised if I just post a link to that show as a reply. So, without further ado, and as soon as you've hit the like button, let's get on with Intermediate Road Tools. Let's start with the one tool mode we didn't really cover in the last video. The Replace button. This, um, replaces the original game's right click to upgrade system. To use, click the Replace button. Choose the new road you would like to have, and then left click and drag over the network you want changing. Where networks are of a different width than before, you can set the specific alignment, but we won't cover that here as there's a little bit more on this later on in this video. Next, we'll look at the additional on-screen information as you draw out your networks. The length of the road probably won't interest many of us as we gradually expand our city limits, but it will definitely come in handy for those with a bigger plan, but if nothing else, watching this number can help keep your city to scale. The financial cost, well, it is unavoidable, and keeping an eye on this number will be key if you are running out of cash. Gradient displays just how steep your road is, with a maximum of 20% before the return of the Road to Steep warning. While there is no definitive rule as to how steep any given real life road should be, a good general guideline is that up to 5% is at least moderately flat, 5 to 10% is a little bit steep, and over 10% isn't fun if you are carrying all of your groceries home. Keep an eye on the gradient meter to make sure your networks remain believable. Finally, if starting from a fixed point, such as a network or even a building, you'll be shown the departure angle, which will help the precision engineering builders amongst us to construct the perfect layout. Moving on. There are now multiple snap two points on a network, and they vary depending on what you're trying to do. Here we can see we can snap to the right carriageway, the central reservation, or the left carriageway. For a standard intersection like this, where on the road you connect to doesn't really matter, as it will produce a regular junction no matter what. Saying that, we will cover an exception to this later on in today's show. You can even make a connection without the nodes even meeting, as the game tries to read your intentions and merges the missed attempts together. So keep an eye open, as misclicks might end with an unforeseen connection. The one new mechanic I need to train my brain to use more often is the ability to draw one network through another. No longer is there any need to stop and start at each intersection. Just carry on through and let the game automatically deal with it. Old original game players will remember the frustration and restrictions of not being able to place roads too close together. 
This is no longer the case. You can now draw it completely and cleanly beside each other. One blight of the perfect road layout is what we call on this channel the Jinky Janky. These can still happen in city skylines too, but are really easy to avoid. Simply, when continuing a network, have snapping switched on. As you drag away, make sure the departure angle is 180 degrees, which is easy to check as the protractor becomes a box. This even works when you are starting to draw a curved section of road. Not all roads have equal numbers of lanes running in both directions. There are one-way streets, single carriageway highways, and asymmetrical roads as well. The road's orientation will follow the direction that you originally drew it out, and with asymmetrical roads, this direction will have the additional lane. But if for any reason you have roads running in the wrong direction, this is really quick and easy to fix. With the correct one-way or asymmetrical road still selected, choose the Replace Road tool, left-click on the road, and then drag in the opposite direction. Next up, Lane Connections. As mentioned previously, there are now multiple places on which to connect a network. This is without doubt one of the greatest innovations within the new game. Let's start with a basic highway connection. Draw out your highway of choice. Now bring in the highway ramp. I'm adding a slight curve for aesthetic realism. With snapping to existing geometry set to on, connect to the edge of the main carriageway and slide the connection position until you are happy and click. This looks great, but we can do better. Here we're going to create a perfect highway ramp, including lane mathematics. We'll start with a three lane highway and extend it into a fourth lane. We really don't need to go very far here, but for the learning benefit of this tutorial, I'm going to overextend this four lane segment. Now let's bring in the highway ramp as we did before, but this time into the start of the first lane of the four lane section. Perfect. Now let's go a little further up the highway and reduce the lanes back down to three. Choose the three lane highway and the replace button. If the game won't let you reduce the lane number back down at the exact point you desire, add an interim junction to create a temporary break in the highway. You can now downgrade the highway beyond this point. As you hover over the section to up or downgrade it, you will find you can now align it into any of a number of set positions. Here we will push it all the way over to the left before bulldozing the stopgap arrangement. Road Limits In terms of speed limits, there are six within the game. Tiny roads, such as alleys, have a limit of just 25 miles or kilometers per hour. Moving up, standard roads have a maximum of 30, while medium and large roads allow up to 35, unless they are divided, in which case the limit is 45. To allow acceleration to get up to speed to filter onto the highway, ramps have a limit of 55, and once you're on the main carriageway, drivers can freely fly off at 70. In terms of other capacity, those roads which can carry low voltage power, which is basically everything which isn't the highway, all carry an equal load of up to 40 megawatts, no matter how many lanes they have. Finally today, we will take a brief look at zoning. When drawing out roads, existing zoning takes priority over new zoning cells. This is shown here as the medium road, which was placed first, keeps all of its cells while the new standard road 
uses any available free space. This pattern is repeated as we complete this irregular block. So place down any roads with zones that you want to keep first and connect them into the network later. Alternatively, you can bulldoze and redraw any roads that you want to go to the back of the priority pile. As a bonus tip, when you have an absolute mess of zoning like this, you can tidy up the loose ends and free up cells on secondary roads through the use of footpaths. And yes Shane, if you're watching this, I borrowed this idea from you. And that's it for today. More advanced road tool tutorials will follow as and when new techniques and ideas begin to emerge. And it won't be long to wait as I'm already working on the first of these now. To catch this, along with a continued series of tutorials across the host of City Skylines 2 topics, make sure you've remembered to subscribe and to hit the notification bell. It'll be great to have you for company along the journey. A big shout out to all the Bomb Bomb Buddies on Patreon and YouTube membership for supporting the channel. Your ongoing input helps to keep both me and the channel fresh and alive. But that really is it for me today. Thanks for watching. I've been Bomb Bomb B, and you've been very, very welcome. <laughs>